Finding traces of corrosion on a Swedish car of this age is a difficult task, but nothing is impossible here. You just need to remember that this is a crossover, and it probably got out on primers. And despite the very high quality of painting and indispensable galvanization, the bottom of the body is poorly covered from dirt. In cars that often drove off-road, dirt gets into the cavity above the fuel tank and into the internal cavities, sometimes gets stuck between the front subframe and the body, under the exhaust thermal protection and numerous aerodynamic panels. You can find old dirt on the tubes of the fuel tank and the brake system, on the suspension assemblies. The consequence is an increased likelihood of panel corrosion near points of contamination. But even without that, there are a bunch of weakly protected brackets on the bottom, which will gradually become centers of corrosion, and such places are already noticeable now. The niche above the engine should be cleaned up, it is prone to the accumulation of sludge and water, which can then damage the seam sealant and cause electrical damage. As practice shows, it will certainly begin to fall into the salon on electronic components over time. While these are trifles that are easy to eliminate, since the body is well protected in general, but it is best to take care of this in advance and carefully check the car when buying. If the task is to find traces of corrosion from the outside, then it will be much more difficult to complete it. Most of the cars in this respect are close to ideal, except that places with damaged paintwork suffer. But still pay attention to the back door, unpleasant surprises are possible along the lower edge and above the license plate. Under the plastic lining of the side walls, sometimes you can also see something, fastener clips, especially if the parts are disassembled, damage the paintwork, and a corrosion process takes place in the hidden zone. It can gradually get out, but for now it can only be tracked by the distortions of decorative details. All aluminum body parts, including rear view mirror brackets and door handles, are at risk. The alloys are not chosen very well, the mirrors turn sour, which causes their drive and wiring to suffer, as well as the paintwork of the door nearby. Pay attention to the trapeze of the wipers. It turns sour infrequently, problems are mainly associated with position sensors. In general, such little things as optics and windshield are made somewhat carelessly. The optics are not only overwritten, but also relatively often their tightness is broken. With traces of fogging, you need to be very vigilant, without waiting for damage to the headlight filling. The windshield is weak, prone to cracking and rubbing. Yes, and the price will not please. Door handles not only suffer from failures of the electronic module in the presence of keyless access, this is rather a blessing given the vulnerability of the system from the long arm, but also break mechanically. If the door is frozen in the cold, it is better not to pull it. And never slam the door, with all the dope, with this treatment, the thrust flies off very easily. And you can damage the window regulator. Tapping locks are a regular occurrence, especially the back door, but this is an easily fixable problem. On the oldest cars, you may encounter door sagging, the Ford hinges turned out to be rather weak for the heavy Swedish design. Leaky roof rails and antennas were usually repaired under warranty, but in any case, carefully inspect the ceiling and side moldings for water stains. And if there is a hatch, listen if something is splashing over your head, the drains here are clogged very easily. In general, it cannot be said that there are no minor problems here at all, on machines over 6 to 7 years old, minor failures and breakdowns occur. And on newer parts, judging by the reviews, the quality of parts is lower than that of cars before restyling. But there are practically no global breakdowns. So long. The interior of the XC60 is sturdy and very Swedish in design. The ergonomics will take some getting used to, and the fact that you need to handle the center console and buttons gently, too. Yes, and other interior equipment requires delicacy in handling. The wear resistance of the interior is quite premium, and after hundreds of thousands of mileage, only the sides of the driver's seat and the emerging squeaks of the lining of the front pillars and the dashboard will give out age. However, after cleaning with steam, you can correctly assess the mileage only by the excessive shine of the skin, which can only be done by a person who has eaten more than one dog on a Volvo. Regularly there are cars with runs over 200,000 kilometers, the interior of which is difficult to distinguish from a new one. Moreover, fair skin here also does not give out age. So the easiest way to estimate the mileage is by the wear of the floor mats, pedal pads, climate control buttons and stock levers. Breakdowns of comfort systems happen infrequently. Rarely, but quite regularly, locks and wiring mirrors fail. The problem is purely electrical, the wiring to the mirror is frayed, simultaneously planting the driver's door bus. 
If the machine is not displaying the outside temperature correctly, and the blind spot warning system is malfunctioning, it is most likely time for you to call an electrician to repair the harness. If the central lock behaves incorrectly, then contact there. But if the air conditioning compressor is noisy, and something unpleasantly howls in the cabin, then you will have to go to the dealer to change the pressure pipe of the system. Strange, but the problem sometimes manifests itself after many years of successful operation, for example, after another winter. Occasionally, according to reviews, just cleaning and vacuuming helps. Electrical and Electronics The XC60 cannot boast of reinforced concrete reliability in this regard, but it is also a sin to complain strongly. Small failures of onboard systems do not cause much trouble, but one must be prepared for the fact that cars with keyless entry, a standard rear-view camera and a full set of security systems have much more problems than cars in simple trim levels. Complaints of a resource nature are mainly related to the low quality of Valio radiator fans, in a typical urban mode, after five to six years of operation, they can have backlashes and increased noise of operation and wedge at startup. Also at risk is the fuel pump in the tank. On petrol models, it is a common cause of engine failure and poor starting, and you need to monitor the condition of the headlights. If they lose their tightness, then electrical problems will almost certainly follow, especially with adaptive discharge optics. And it is extremely expensive, and besides, it is very difficult to find a new one brakes, suspension and steering. The braking system on the Volvo XC60 pleases mainly with reliability and predictability. And it does not please with squeaks, a low resource of pads and hand brake failures. Squeaks, unfortunately, are a common occurrence, especially if you do not change the pads at the dealer. It is very important to thoroughly clean the brake cylinder and use a complete new set when replacing pads. Less often, problems arise due to wedging of the guides, especially on the rear wheels. But this usually happens at runs over 200,000 and with insufficient maintenance. With the resource of the original pads, this is not a problem, but a nuance. The onboard safety systems are very active. The resource of the pads is spent on drying the discs on a wet road, and course correction in corners, and many other important functions. And the car itself is quite heavy, and with active movement, the load on the braking system is high. The suspension, contrary to panic rumors, is quite strong and reliable here. With a reasonable size of rubber, she exchanges a hundred thousand without any special repairs, and with a good driver, one and a half hundred. There is a problem with the availability of non-original components, and Volvo's silent blocks are almost never changed regularly. But Ford and its parts will help here. The main complaint about the suspension is, nevertheless, perhaps its excessive rigidity and the unpredictable and low resource of wheel bearings. And for active suspension, there is also a high price of components with a minimum of positive effects. There are two weak points in the steering, the rack and the electric power steering pump. In any case, their problems are associated with a rare replacement of the working fluid, which is better to change after 40,000 mileage. It is worth changing the filter tank, which is perfect for Land Rover. Oddly enough, it will be cheaper and more accessible. Transmission Front-wheel drive cars are quite common but the bulk of the XC60 crossover still have all-wheel drive with the Haldex clutch and the rear axle drive. The mechanical part of the transmissions does not have any special weaknesses. The resource of CV joints, cardan shaft, and rear gearbox is more than sufficient. With runs of less than 150,000, breakdowns are extremely rare and are mainly associated with loss of oil level and mechanical damage. Purely city cars with constant plug operation may have a shorter life of the intermediate support of the cardan shaft, but such cases are rare. All-wheel drive for cars until 2012 is carried out using the Haldex coupling of the fourth generation, and after, the fifth. The easiest way to distinguish between them is visually, the fifth generation couplings have a separately made pump unit, an electronic board on the right side and a more compact body of the coupling itself. Fifth generation couplings are easier to maintain, the drive shaft does not need to be removed to change the oil, and on the fourth generation couplings, the pump rests against the drive shaft coupling when removed. But newer couplings require much more maintenance. The pump mesh becomes clogged after 20 to 30,000 mileage, which leads to its failure. The fifth generation does not have a hydraulic accumulator and a separate filter, it is generally noticeably simpler and cheaper, but, unfortunately, it remains more expensive to repair. The fourth Haldex is noticeably better in this respect. This clutch, without any special consequences, 
with gentle operation. Endures an oil change after 40 to 50,000 runs for the first time and about 30 to 40,000 in subsequent ones. For careful drivers and with runs under 100,000, the oil may turn out to be clean. And the chances of pump failure are much less. A clutch of any generation with the active use of all-wheel drive should be sorted out with the cover removed and the crankcase cleaned once every two or three years. With active forcing of Fords, problems with the electronic part of the couplings are possible especially if the service was too lazy to service the connectors. With manual transmissions, there are no particular difficulties. The M66 six-speed gearbox, with careful operation, proved to be quite reliable. But you should keep an eye on the oil level, and fans of driving at especially low speeds should worry about the resource of dual-mass flywheels. With automatic transmission, everything is somewhat more complicated. The bulk of the cars on our market are diesel versions with six-speed automatic transmissions Eisen TF80SC. The same box was installed before restyling with 3.2 and 3.0-liter gasoline engines. Pre-styling gasoline 2-liter cars were equipped with a pre-selective automatic transmission 6DCT450 manufactured by GetRag. Well, after restyling, 2-liter diesel and gasoline cars were equipped with an 8-speed automatic transmission Eisen TG81SC also known as AWF8F35 slash AWF8F45. The number of complaints about the Eisen automatic transmission is quite large, but, nevertheless, they are considered quite reliable, and experienced Volvo drivers love them. Paradox? Not at all, it's just that these boxes are very strong, but the standard cooling system, to put it mildly, is rather weak. It ensures normal operation during the warranty period, subject to the mild European mode of movement. This automatic transmission loves low city speeds, lack of sharp accelerations, stable speed, no hard overtaking on the highway, clean radiators, and caring mechanics. The manufacturer promises that the box will pass 350,000 kilometers. It is believed that Scandinavian cars should drive just as much to make the consumer happy. In our conditions and with our drivers, after hundreds of thousands of regular maintenance, you can expect minor problems in the form of jerks, slippage when switching due to contamination of the valve body and damage to the solenoids. And cars from large cities can have a noticeably greater number of problems due to the permanent overheating of the transmission in the summer. Almost all complaints about transmission problems in Volvo arise from those who believe the standard manual and official services do not install additional cooling and change the oil at least once every 60 to 90,000 kilometers. Experienced Volvo drivers install additional radiators and external filters without waiting for the first call, change the oil every 30,000 kilometers and have no problems throughout the entire run in any operating mode. However, there are plenty of occasional Volvo buyers. Yes, and those who consider the factory design to be infallible, and the need for regular repairs as an undoubted and easy duty, are enough even among fans of the brand, so it's still worth talking about the problems they have. The main problem with all eyes in automatic transmissions is the wear of the valve body plate and the lack of official repair kits for solenoids. Oil contamination eats away the aluminum of the plate, and even with new solenoids installed, the box will not work like new. More precisely, it will not work when the limit of adaptation of the control unit is reached, and these limits are quite large. So the scanner and flushing often work wonders, the main thing is not to bring the automatic transmission to the destruction of the mechanical part. The friction linings of the GDT do not withstand a too aggressive style of movement, which, unfortunately, is becoming familiar to the latest call-up Volvo drivers. Already after hundreds of thousands of kilometers, accelerated contamination of even fresh oil can be observed due to wear of the linings to the adhesive layer, in which case an urgent repair of the gas turbine engine is required. Fortunately for the XC60, the bulk of the cars are equipped with classic 2.4-liter diesel engines with a very mild thermal regime which also has a good effect on the operation of the automatic transmission. The operating conditions of the box with gasoline engines are noticeably tougher, and the resource of the boxes is much less, especially for aggressive drivers. The newer 8-speed unit TG81SC, AWF8F35 slash AWF8F45, is in many ways similar to an improved and supplemented version of the 6-speed box. The runs of cars with it are still small, and the complaints relate mainly to the hard, down, switching, which sometimes manifests itself at runs up to 30,000 kilometers, as well as strange transitions into emergency mode. The design remains quite exotic for our market, 
so there are definitely problems with the repair. But foreign users report the benefits of additional cooling and solving problems with replacing the valve body. Of the interesting features is the use of a dual mass flywheel paired with an automatic transmission, so if you hear tapping at low speeds, remember that there is such a detail here. Front wheel drive cars with 2.0 liter engines are found with the GetRag 6 DCT450 box. In short, there is no need to be afraid of it in panic. There are a lot of motors for the Volvo XC60. There are 3.2 and 3.0 liter inline petrol sixes, well known from the second generation S80 model, and 2 liter petrol turbo engines, just as well known from the second generation S60. But surprisingly, 2.4 liter diesel engines and different boost options turned out to be the most popular option. The reason for the popularity is quite obvious, diesels cover a good power range, they are mainly combined with classic automatic transmissions and four-wheel drive, they are quite economical and, moreover, they are available in all trim levels, from inexpensive to top-end ones. Well, of course, these motors deservedly have the status of reliable and time-tested, because these are the last representatives of the modular engine series, which dates back to the 90s. I don't want to say anything bad about other engines, they are very good at Volvo, but diesels are very good even against their background. Engine. The motors of the third generation D5244 XX line, which were installed on the XC60, retained the main features of their predecessors. All the same five cylinders, four valves per cylinder, aluminum block, belt-driven camshafts and a fair amount of reliability. The most powerful options have about 440 newton meters of torque and more than 215 horsepower power. What can be said about the few mechanical failures? For example, sometimes rockers fail in the timing drive, which play the role of a fuse when the timing belt breaks. They are prone to breakage when twisted, especially on motors with runs over 200,000. The timing mechanism is recommended to be changed every 60,000 and carefully monitored for oil contamination. Motors are prone to fogging and even leaks. Most of the complaints are caused by quite typical diesel problems, pollution and leakage of injectors, pollution of the intake manifold and breakdown of the actuator of the dampers for changing geometry, pollution of the EGR valve, pollution and leakage of its heat exchanger. Particulate filter contamination is a problem, in general, typical for all diesel engines and on a Volvo, the engine really does not like those who do not drive on the highway at all. Quite a few minor annoyances are caused by the layout of auxiliary systems. For some reason, a long intake manifold and its vibrations are considered by owners to be the cause of oil leaks, although in practice oil leaks from the intake are only an indicator of them. And a modification that is fashionable among Volvo drivers with the installation of an additional mounting bracket will not fix the crankcase ventilation system. Although intake manifold vibrations lead to abrasion of the engine compartment wiring harness and the front cooling system pipe, a more effective way is to remove the Helmholtz resonator, which is very large here and can wipe a hole in the electrics and cooling system. Another feature of the engines on the XC60 is the lack of a regular oil probe, an electronic level sensor is used here. If possible, it is worth installing a classic dipstick. The oil can begin to decrease if the ventilation system is contaminated or the turbine is damaged very quickly, and the electronics sometimes fail, and there are already a lot of ruined motors on the conscience of the electronic sensor. The appearance of cracks in the pistons during injector leaks and overblowing is, unfortunately, a fairly common problem. Especially if coking oil was used, the piston cooling nozzles are dirty, and the owner does not pay attention to the excess volume of crankcase gases for a long time. When buying a car, pay attention to the volume of crankcase gases and engine oiling. And it is better to measure compression even with low mileage, especially if there are signs of overheating or the likelihood of installing chip tuning. When using low viscosity SAE20 oils, there is also a chance for crankshaft scuffing and increased wear of the liners after 150,000 miles, but this is still a very rare problem. In the world of modern disposable motors, the motors of this series can still be considered a bulwark of stability serviceability, and reasonableness. Definitely, the car has earned its popularity. This is a very good alternative to the overly complicated German cars. There are few shortcomings in the most running configurations. Among them are the presence of minor failures even in the first years of operation and the intense thermal regime of the automatic transmission in a typical Russian urban cycle, as well as not very favorable service conditions from dealers. But the pluses definitely outweigh 
especially if you don't take cars with new generation 2 liter engines and don't chase after overly sporty chassis trim levels. And it would be nice to have in mind a proven service that serves cars not according to the regulations, but in good conscience.